I am unashamed. What about you? Welcome to Unashamed. I can uh, I can already tell we're we're giddy today, Jace. There's just a lot of giddiness going on in this, this lots set. Of, These... Lots of giddiness. Well, I had a <laughs> dream. Let... I had a dream last night. I was telling y'all about <laughs> that. I did not want to share, but y'all have convinced me to share it because there was some hidden meaning, and I actually. <laughs> <laughs> have realized what the dream was about in between me sharing it three minutes ago. Oh, you've had right the interpretation now. already. So you've <laughs> yeah. interpreted your own dream. I have we got dream. Joseph. We got I, Joseph on set. Okay. We had a weird event happen, and then I had the interpretation. I will now disclose right. the dream. So Missy's in Nashville, so I'm by myself. Last night was the end of duck season at 5 38 p.m that was when the sun set and i looked around because i was in the woods hunting ducks to the very end and i said well that was all of that which i could have done the same thing yesterday afternoon at my house because i did not <laughs> discharge my weapon <laughs> yeah but, Yesterday at five twenty days, I was I also experienced it, but I was just watching football. So there yeah. you go. So I had a dream. I woke up this morning, and in a panic, I ran to a mirror, which I never do. If it was up to me, I would have no mirrors at the house <laughs> because I had a dream that I had shaved. Ooh, and to, and it was so strong that I went and looked which I could have just reached up and grabbed my face as a, you know, reflect yeah. on it. <laughs> you had to make sure. But, you know, I'd slept for an uncomfortable amount of time because I went to bed last night at 7.30, which was my couch. I remember I was going to watch the football game, and I woke up 10 or 12 hours thinking I had shaved. <laughs> so then when I get down here to the podcast, which I hadn't shaved, obviously, I looked at Zach's seat, Phil and I did simultaneously, and thought, man, Zach has been transformed. I, I thought he shaved, and he lost a lot of weight. A few pounds, thinking, yeah. Boy, he had a bad, bad night. But it, <laughs> it was actually someone who looked like Zach if he didn't have a beard, and he was like 25 years old. I was going to say, a lot younger. <laughs> Uh, you, let's, let, and you did say that you did you did subtract fifty pounds. You did accuse me of being fifty pounds. I was not going to say that to all <laughs> for all the people. I said, Zach, you look like you've shaved and lost fifty pounds. Yeah, the, there. Here's the moral of the story: Don't gain weight around here. <laughs> <laughs> but we later found out well, Zach, that it was. I'm not going to talk about it. Okay, that anyway. Zach has because he's obviously the diva of our foursome here. <laughs> Yeah. He actually has a person to sit in his chair and get the oh, camera yeah. right. Which you know why? Because I'm the one adjusting my own camera. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> oh, the diva. I had to, I, and I'm not a camera guy, but uh, yeah, just my own camera. So they, he's well, the fact camera. he has a guy around puts him in a different category than me. I mean, he does have a guy. Well, that's you know, what I mean. So yeah, the, exactly. the meaning of the dream, if you put two and two together, is yes officially duck season has ended. So I guess that's what the dream was about, which is now I could technically shave my beard, which is what we did for years. We would grow the beard out starting in the summer all the way to duck season where it gets nice and long because it's great camouflage, great for warmth. It deters burglaries, among other, th other things. And then when duck season is over, you start over it's kind of a rebirth process every year for duck hunters huh yeah i remember you used to shave i did it for 20 25 years that's what that's what was so funny about when our little duck show came out people would they found pictures of when we had done the shaving after duck season and they're like the lie exposed these are the real robertsons of yeah. the duck dynasty and it was us on a beach, you know, clean shaven. They're like, but I don't remember Phil. Pictures. I don't remember Phil shaving. I don't. I don't have any. No, he would. He would just crop his short. Yeah. I mean, he would cut it. He would but trim he did, it. Yeah. He would trim it. He didn't shave his all the way. He had a bad work. experience. He 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 had a bet one time at church with the preacher, 
way yeah. back when over something. I don't even know what their bet was about. No, it dad, was. I remember what the bet was about. What was it? It was about uh, it. Phil had this idea that, oh, no, Ray Melton, who was a preacher, had an idea. said, what you ought to do is go to this. There's a community in in our town that's basically pretty poor and and downtrodden and they were talking about trying to do something for the lord i mean kingdom living here what can we do to to bring jesus and, and to help some of these people and ray melton had the idea he's like you need to if you just had a fish fry down there the whole neighborhood would come just offer a free fish fry so they feels like they they're not gonna they're not gonna come to that i got a beard look at me and ray melton said i guarantee if you do that over a hundred people will come and so a bet formed oh that was whether the they would be over a hundred people and feels like if over a hundred people comes i'll shave my beard ha ha and ray melton said that's the bet <laughs> and he had to, and he had, and he to, had wear to wear a, a suit, suit. A suit to church. Phil, it was actually a great thing because Ray Melton was convinced because Phil's fish were so good. He's yeah. like, I've never eaten fish like this. It's just the best. And he's like, people will come from miles around. He was making a point, you know, Jesus fed the 5,000. It's like, you want to make an impact on this community. If you go and, and fry up your fish, People will come from miles around, and they did. Oh, and, and look, we have many lasting relationships will, will, that I, formed in that I, moment that still today, 30 years later. I, I will guess. interject in what you said. To this day, that still to a degree, because, you know, I'm hanging on 80 now. So, <laughs> but, but I will say, there's a, if you, the, the fish thing, it, that was belly meat. Boneless belly meat <laughs> stripped of mm. Opelousas catfish, which is the mm. finest mm. catfish there is. There is. I agree. And, and, and I had them fried. You could, the children could eat them. There were no bones there. Where it might stick in my mouth, I get a bone hung. <laughs> this was belly meat off of Opelousas cat, and I'm the one that caught the cat. So it was fresh right out of the river. I mean, it was the way to have fish if you go out. Well, and the, brilliant, the, the brilliant thing about the whole deal was they carried it over to that Sunday. Melton was pretty pretty smart because he – so dad comes in wearing a suit with no beard, and he had never been seen in the church like that uh, except maybe when he was first converted. And Melton didn't shave for however much time it was in war camo. So he's preaching like that. So he could tell the story. Mm -hmm. But what happened was dad, it, it kind of backfired because dad got so much attention because he looked so good in the suit and without a beard, and especially from some of the sisters that it made dad super uncomfortable. And so I don't think you would, I mean, I think you just kind of nix that whole thing. Hey, going. It was far. fun though. Hey, that yeah, day, I remember fun. that I want to know the funny part. That's the last time I, I had a shave. A shave. <laughs> that's right. It I wish is. we knew how long that's ago a, that was. You think thirty years ago? That's got to be. Oh, it's 30. it's more than it's it's more like. Well, 40, I mean, yeah. I remember it, so I had to be post teenager because I don't. You were a teenager, Jay. It's right when we went back to WFR. It was the it was the mid eighties is when it was. I remember walking in there and because nobody recognized Phil. No, he had a suit on and he was clean shaven. Oh, uh, it should be. I There's don't think so. Be. There's, There's got to be. So. Al I just remember a, a sister who was older, who was just, <laughs> it was like a groupie. And dad was so uncomfortable, like it, you know, because she yeah. just couldn't get over it. She got, you know, dad was like, no, nope, no more. And that was it. You you never shaved again. No. But that is another mystery revealed since we're revealing those, that the uh, reason Phil's catfish is better than any other is that it starts with the actual catfish. Because the Opelousas cat cannot be raised in captivity. Therefore, the only way you can eat one is to go catch him. And, and he only eats, he he only eats fresh meat. Well, there was more than 100 people there. I mean, you lost the bet overwhelmingly. I remember it. I mean, it was, it was awesome. And Phil got up and shared Jesus. And that's what I said. 
you know, it was about and it's funny, but you know, especially after going through Luke up until this point, it, it was a it was a kingdom moment and a Jesus moment, and a yeah. lot of those relationships, you know, that were made with the Lord are still lasting to this day. It sure is. Which is yeah. why which is why we were so excited to find out that that Jesus post resurrection ate fish. That I mean, that fired our crew up. Once we when you exactly. had that understanding, it was like we baptized five yesterday. So now it just. <laughs> Do we want to talk about that? Yeah, you want to tell about that? <laughs> well, I, let me it. tell it from my perspective, and Phil okay. can interject. Because of the person, <laughs> we, we should stay off of that. Well, we won't say his name, Phil. He, nobody, well, no one would ever find that out. I, I mean, you, you think? I, I don't think it was. It was. Let me well, just. He's saying, he's we, saying well, in case he's listening, he didn't want to embarrass him. But we've got the suspense now. I mean, I know. <laughs> we have to Phil, I'm going to make a judgment call. I do not think he'll be offended whatsoever. Once you surrender to Christ, you're surrendered to Christ. Anyway, I like I liked the style. That. He did that. Oh, he surrendered. I mean, it in was. big way. Because I, I watched it. You know, Phil and them had a guy, one of the five, they were fixed to baptize him, which y'all had two people there. You were on one side. Who was on the other? Jersey? Burley. Oh, Burley. Burley. So you have two capable, large men here who look very rough. And, uh, at, you know, they were, you know, he was like, I accept Jesus as my Lord. And they were fixed to baptize him. And he just, he just left the surface. He just torpedoed down. It was a, di- it was a dive. Yeah. It, it was a, yeah, Instead you're talking about going a, back, back first, and a cover up, and the raising back. He just went forward like a nosedive. Yeah, and went under the water though. He kind of just went straight down. Went Did straight you have down. your hands still on him? Yeah, I had my. So hands, you just kind of, and I just my hands just followed him down. But <laughs> normally you look, it's like this. Well, this yeah. was like that. Yeah. So. Which I've seen people baptize people forward before, you know. He was just a, a very. Uh, he was in tears, and he yep. it was a. He gave me a picture of the Lord's Supper when the the followers of Jesus were eating, and he gave me a little picture. And I'm gonna hang. I'll hang it in here where people can see it. You know, it's pretty cool. Wrote me a little note on the back of it. You know, just. Well, I was just going to say, Phil, from what I saw, I saw a man broken, ready, and That's serious right. <laughs> about what he was doing. So it wasn't a negative that thing whatsoever. It, it actually kind of moved me to tears. You know, I thought, boy, this this guy is yep. he he is happy. So he's a brother. He's a brother. And no matter how how they get down, they're, they're, the getting down is the key. Let's uh let's let's take a break. Hey, one more thing I was going to mention, guys, because I've been getting besieged with emails and and now text and stuff on uh, X from listeners because we brought up this thing about the the Bills missing a field goal like a week ago and the Chiefs won. So this has got this conspiracy theory that you talked about your wife and Jessica having. It was confirmed that Maddie, who's our producer there, also – said she believes that, that the NFL is trying to make sure the Chiefs make it. So yesterday, they went again, and I wouldn't say there was anything necessarily controversial, but there were some calls that were questionable. So I'm getting more stuff during the game. But then I got a, a note from Chris this morning on Twitter, or X now, and I'm just going to throw this into the mix because now there's people that are buying this you know, worldwide. Taylor Swift, according to this marketing company, Taylor Swift has generated three hundred and thirty-two million in brand value for the NFL since September, <clears throat> since she started showing up at Chiefs games. So maybe there is something. To- <laughs> well, does that mean that our three wives you can't teach someone? I don't think to miss a field goal by about three, two, two or three feet. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so, that would be pretty good. Bill's objecting to the conspiracy. <laughs> well, right. I was wondering, did our three wise women start this 
conspiracy or were they? I don't know. I hadn't, I hadn't heard about it till you brought it up. Now Zach said he's been here, but he's, you know, he's well, got but, his, yeah, the timing but of I, this. Well, but I heard it first here on Unashamed, which Thank by the you. way, if you, if you want dated news, this is where you can hear it first right here. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> or not paying attention. So, if you want dated up, uh, breaking dated news right here, unashamed. This is Two weeks ago, we had a theory. Our three women did, and it came yeah. true. And now people are talking about it, and I'm getting stuff from all over. But James, I mean, do you really think that it started here? I mean, I, that would be shocking if if it all started right here. Yeah, it did not. Podcast. It didn't start. Our, it did not. I hear a voice. <laughs> I hear a female voice. The three wise women said it did not start. Here. I think it started globally when that I field think, goal was I missed. Think one more time, there is a, a, a rule that uh, a situation becomes a crisis when cattle or women stampede. <laughs> Someone once said that, but it, 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 that, that's what we're looking at here. <laughs> yeah, well, you're not allowed to say that anymore, I don't think. <laughs> I mean, you can cut that or run it, but I'd run it. <laughs> One more thing you'll only hear on the Unashamed right, Podcast. Man. I mean, coach a uh, football team on how to lose? Uh, no. Nah. Well, but, uh, I will say it's now a tar- it's it's a you know I had some people over watching the game yesterday, and it is now a point of comment and talking because they keep they cut to and I really I blame the network I don't really blame Taylor Swift she's just at the game, but they keep cutting to her suite and I just thought yeah, I mean it's like every time something happened yesterday you had a big game and so it's like. Well, yeah, they're, yeah, what's, they're what's, definitely what's making Taylor's this. reaction here. Oh, she's jumping up and down. She's acting like, you know, it's, she's never seen anything like it. And yes. And then she's down on the field, you know, at and the end of the game going up because, you know, now we're, we're trading kisses. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, well, so, it just shows uh, you how our culture loves to promote people on pedestals. They They do. Be careful though when they get you on the pedestal. They, That's right. Only one way to Wait till the big go. breakup and then the whole thing's over. Uh, one more thing I want to mention this weekend I'm going to be in New Kent, Virginia. It's the New Kent uh, Christian um, Center, is where it's at. And so uh, if you want to check that out, uh, come see me on Saturday. Lisa's speaking on Friday. She's already sold out uh, that part of it on Friday night. I thought, well, once again, Jay's, the women, the, the women, know what they're doing so how many women active women do you listen to in your life jace how many do you actually just talk to on any sort of a regular basis well the three wise women and uh (laughs) there's one more that works with me on the tv stuff so i guess four and my mom but it's more at this stage of our relationship a hug and what have you been doing (laughs) <laughs> Maybe uh, an occasional attaboy. Yeah. Well, we had that my, yesterday at church. It was a hug, and what have you been doing? I was like, with mom, all it takes is one starter. Yeah. And then you just step back because the words will flow. She's got to get her 25,000. Yeah, so I got five key women, I guess, in my life. You know, one in TV, one in the podcast, uh, my wife, my sister in law, my mom, who I yep. kind of, you know, Get the pulse of female. Well, and you from, got and you got Bonnie who keeps up with your schedule. Well, that's true. It? That's six. Yeah, you're right, I, Al. You've named all the women in my life. You know, know what's funny is my son came and duck hunted with us the last three days, which he missed it by three days because we were just hammering them. But and he's like he couldn't take it anymore. He had to come down and finish the season, which was great. But. You know, I was gonna. I was trying to give him some advice. You know, I'm his dad here now. He's got two kids of his own, and what what was so interesting is he gave me the best advice that I could ever uh, have received, and it was from my son in a moment where I'm trying to just check, see where he's at. You know, and he's talking about Jesus, and I was like, "Now look, it's you got two little kids. It's you know, marriage can be difficult and." So somewhere in there, I was like, I was like, you're always going to have problems. And I was using the illustration and 
the illustration was, I said, you can tell when they're upset because it goes quiet for a couple of days. You know, <laughs> that's when, you can tell. <laughs> yeah, you can tell. All of a sudden, you're like, wait a minute. It takes first, you two days what? to figure it out. Then. And I'm <laughs> repenting here that, yeah, that it takes me two days to realize there's a problem. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Two hours, not two hours, hey, two days. I, I'm going to use I, that one. I'm going to tell Jill, hey, it could be worse. Jay said it takes him two days. It takes me two days. Missy's upset. Look, so. I'm <laughs> repenting, and I'm going to share a story. Missy probably would be agitated, that, but since she doesn't listen to the podcast, uh, on a regular basis, maybe she'll miss this one. But and, and look, I'm going to say right now, I'm going to confess my sins. I'm wrong. After the two days has transpired and we start getting to what happened, I'm wrong 99.9% of the time. <laughs> but what happens is what my son showed me where my idiocy and stupidity was was in this. I've been married over 30 years. Well, he showed me where I'm wrong because well, I try to then backtrack when she finally lets me know where I was wrong. I try to backtrack and figure out, well, how, well, how did this happen? So I'm trying to get the details. I'm like, no, what happened? Cause I don't remember. Obviously we're two days in. I never gave it another thought. So in this one instance that I was sharing with him, I was like, cause I picked the 0.1% cause this latest thing had happened. She had sent me a video uh, of something that had to do with me, Mia, and she said she did. And uh, so what happened was I never responded to the video, and she was like, how do you not respond? Because she's out of town. So she was upset at me for a couple of days because I didn't respond to the video. And so after two days of realizing there's a problem, you know, and it's not big. None of this is like she's really mad. I just knew I, I must have done something. She's like, well, how come you never responded to that video? So I scroll back as we're talking. Well, there's no video. So I thought, wait a minute here. So I said, I've, I've looked back. She's like, oh, it's there. Well, when she looked back, she realized she never sent the video. And so I'm like hands in the air. Now, you're upset two days over a video being sent that was never sent. <laughs> and so this so, is one of the points, point one percent. Point one percent. I finally <laughs> have been absolved. It was not me. And uh, so but her response is what then made me mad because it was like, oh, I don't know how that happened. And we just went on and I thought, well, wait a minute here. No, I want bloodshed here. You know, I want groveling. You know, how could I have been upset over something gotta, that got to be payment? There's got to be payment. And so my son says in that moment, he's like, Dad, from my experience, my whole marriage changed for the better when they come to me and say, This is what happened. I just say, You're right. I'm so sorry. I'll try to do better. He said, When I started doing that, my marriage got way better in a hurry. And I said, you know what, Reed? You're right. Instead of analyzing it, trying to see, because they're just little nitpicky things. That's right. And 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm wrong. And so I should have just said, you know what? You're right. I'll do better instead of running an investigation. And that would probably work in any relationship. Let's, uh, let's take a break. That would probably work, Jace, because even in church, you know, somebody comes up and gripes about something, I find where now I just say, yeah, I'm so sorry about that. We'll try to do better. And it's just like all of a sudden it's over. You know, they well, in the better. spirit of surrender and who we are, we're going to make mistakes. And, you know, our relationships reflect our bigger relationship with Christ. And, you know, we mess up where you know, our heart can be in the right place and we still in moments throughout the day – we just, we get off track and uh, God's grace is sufficient. But I thought about, you know, here we are in Luke 23. And before I guess we do our recap, I just thought, you know, it, when you, when you actually read the crucifixion, you have four gospel accounts of it. It's something that we don't do very often. It People, do, they don't preach on it much and, and, 
as I analyze that, it's a lot easier to kind of talk about what it means or go to the the letters to the churches and say, look at it from a theological standpoint. Yeah, the implications, right? Yeah, but when you actually look at it, it it's kind of like when you see a movie that's a true story and it needed to be told, but you feel like when somebody says, was that a great movie? And you're like, you know, it was hard to watch. Yes, it was a great movie. And and I'm bringing up, you know, when The Passion came out, when somebody said, was it good? I was like, not really. It was you're a well done. You're articulating what I was volunteered to to get to get together. I got about a five minute rant. That I All right, let's hear it, man. Well, isn't that weird how we, all the signs are lining up here. Signs are lining up. (laughs) All right, Dad, give us your rant. What's what's your thought, Phil? My thought is this. If you you look carefully for a long time from the Old Testament moving forward as the years are going by and the events that are happening and the predictions that are being made. About Jesus' death? About, about about Jesus and, and what what all this is about. So, if you look in Matthew, the, it, it, all kinds of gigantic miracles are are passing by. Uh, Jesus feeds the four thousand. The faith of the Canaanite woman. Uh, John the Baptist beheaded, clean and unclean. The parable of the net. A prophet without honor. Jesus feeds the 5,000. The the parable of the mustard seed and the yeast. The parable of the sower. The signs of John. You start reading, but, but something is missing. So in the middle of, of this writing, Matthew 16, 21, you get to the middle of the, of the letter. You get to the middle of it, and for all of a sudden, what comes out of it? Jesus predicts his death. That's right after the yeast of the Pharisees, Peter's confession of Christ. Well, sixteen twenty-one, middle of the of the of the writing. We're looking at the middle of one. Well, I got the middle of all of them. So from that time on, there's a change here. Verse 21, 16, Matthew 16, 21. Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem. So that's the target. And, and, and anybody listening would say that he wants to do what? He wants to go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the most religious people on earth, chief priests, most religious people on earth, and teachers of the law, most up until now, the greatest teachers ever, and that he must suffer many things, and one of them is that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. You're like, do what? Well, from that time on, you turn one page, and he says it again. Verse 22, 1722, the Son of Man is going up to to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him. And on the third day, he will be raised to life. That's Matthew. But he begins in the middle. If you go to Mark, you say, when does he bring out the fact that he has got to die? I'm going to die. Well, with Mark, it's Mark chapter 8, middle of Mark. It was the middle of the one before. He then began to teach. This is 831. In Mark, middle of the of the writing, he then began to teach that the Son of Man must suffer many things. Well, he said that just a day or two before that. Same thing. Suffer many things and be rejected by the elders. He names the people, the religious people, the good people, chief priests, teachers of the law, and that he must be killed. What's going to come from these very religious people, Jesus said, is my death. And look, I must, he must be killed. Because at the time, they're trying to get a handle on what in the world is he doing? Who is that? And what is he doing? 
He must be killed and after three days rise again. Well, you end up, when you get to the end of Matthew, watch. It all, it all is unfolding. Look in your Bible. The crucifixion. He's been saying, I'm going to die all, all the way from Mark uh, from, uh, in the middle. The death of Jesus, the burial of Jesus. Well, he's been saying that now for several months, if not years. And the resurrection is at the end of it. It's good news at the end of what Matthew was talking about. Then there's the Great Commission. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He's gone over life and death. They kill me, and I'm still standing right here. Therefore, what you do is, the human race, go and make disciples of all nations. I've been trying to get you to, my death is going to be hollowed out over and over and over worldwide. So therefore, go make disciples. You baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's just Matthew. You turn one page. You're looking at Mark. Open in line in Mark. The beginning of the gospel, the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Well, guess what? In the middle of Mark, in chapter 8, middle of the book, middle of the letter, middle of the letter, Verse 31, chapter 8. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, back on the religious world, chief priests, in their hands, their mean, their killers, and teachers of the law, that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this. And Peter and him took him aside, and they began to say and rebuke him. They're like, you know, why are you? You talking about dying in the middle of all this? Jesus said, you got it. Hold on to it. The healing of the blind man, the healing of the deaf and the dumb, the feed, he feeds the four that. Right in the middle of it all. I've got to die, guys. I'm going to die. But in three days, I'll be back. Right in the middle of all that. When you get to the end of Mark, I'm turning it. Right in the dead middle, the prediction is made. You get to the end. Well, what do you know? The death of Jesus. Well, he said he got to die. I'm going to die. He did. The burial of Jesus. He was buried. The resurrection. It was promised. They'll kill him. In three days, he's going to live. Take it at any time in Amer American culture or worldwide culture. Somebody tells you they're fixing to die, and they do. And then they tell you why. Because, look, you say, well, well, what did he tell them to do? He said to them, go into all the world and preach the good news. Tell them about my dying and being <laughs> resurrected. Start that right there and see where, how far you can go. Well, that's what I did yesterday morning. I just told them that Jesus had come to die for their sins, to remove their sins. And three days later, he was resurrected because that's in there too. I'll not only forgive you of your sins, I will raise you, I promise, from the dead, and I'm standing here talking to you, and you know I died, and I've beaten death. You want in on this action? That's basically what he's saying. Matthew, Mark, Luke 9, 22, always in the middle. It's in the middle of the writing. You say, all of the things he's done, sends out the 12, Peter's confession, Jesus feeds the 5,000, the parable of the sower. We go over all this, a dead girl and a sick woman, the healing. Of... Well, what did he say? Luke recorded, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the teachers of the law. The most religious people on earth were the ones that took the hardest stand against him. It's amazing. And he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. So you get to the end of Luke. And if you look carefully at the top of your page all the way through, you read about Jesus' death. That's what Matthew said. That's what Mark said at the end of their letter, at the end of their work. Jesus' death, Jesus' burial, the resurrection. What well, he's already told them. That's what I'm going to do. So get ready. And a lot of them like, whoa, 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 whoa. 
They did. They did. They doubted. So the resurrection. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful man, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. That must happen. Then they remembered his word. They're saying, he's putting all this thing together. Well, fast forward 2,000 years, and a lot of people don't even keep the main thing, Jesus' his death, his burial, his resurrection. Go baptize him. I mean, what in the world else would you want? And to this day, a lot of people still just go around the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. So, and you get to the book of John, that's John 12 in the middle. It's in the middle. He's already performed miracle after miracle after miracle. Well, guess what he says with uh, John 11 says, I'm the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will, even though he dies, he'll live and believe in me. He'll never die. You believe this? So if you look at all this, everything is tied to God becoming flesh, dying on a cross, being buried, raised from the dead. The one who pulled this off is telling them exactly, and they still are saying, what? <laughs> Therefore, when you get to modern day, we just ought to keep up with what Matthew said, what Mark said, what Luke said, and what John said. Do what they said, and the response, repent and be baptized. Go make disciples and baptize them. They'll be my kingdom. I'm the king. That's all worked into this. So you look at it, it's not complex at all. It's really not. But it's only not complex if you believe it. And you must believe it or you'll be thrown out of the, never, never even in it, never even knew it passed you by. So that was my, my little warm up just to let you know. <laughs> that, that, was, was that was the most celebrated warm -up. thing that ever happened. <laughs>
it's a it's tough thing to tell you, you're going to do you're going to do what? But Phil, what I think I, but, when you die, you ain't coming back. Yeah, but just what I'm saying is the never no one's ever looking at that as something great and powerful and wise. Those those are the opposite. Yeah. Th- those are for lesser people to wash somebody's feet, to host a meal. That's that's for servants. That's that's not if if you're going to be somebody, you're not going to do that. Then you would never volunteer volunteer to oh, suffer. You're right. And, and die. You just wouldn't do it. So I think it's more about a definition of power. It's about what God's kingdom looks like, and you know. Paul's going to address that in all his letters to the churches when he said he chose the foolishness of the cross to shame the wise. What was that? What was the third thing, Jess? You had washes their feet, fed them a meal. What was the third thing? And the cross itself. Oh, the cross. Voluntarily itself. going to a. You, you just. I got you. I, I'm saying people don't. They reject Jesus because they see a cross and say, "Well, how how was that a good thing?" But these religious people. That Jesus was trying to convert was there. Here, here's you stiff-necked and uncircumcised hearts and and ears. You're just like your fathers. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your fathers did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you betrayed and murdered him. Yeah. You who have received the law that was put into effect through angels and have not obeyed it. So that is the, that's the thrust of the matter. But they should have, to your but, point, to the point ahead, there that Jesus is, is, he's attacking the fact that they rejected the prophets. I was, when you were, when y'all were talking about that, I was thinking about all the servant songs uh, in Isaiah 53. You got the, um, you got the picture of the suffering servant, and I mean, so these the the nuggets of how the kingdom would come, they they were there in the Old Testament. I mean, the, the, it's what the prophets talked about. I mean, That's you right. read here, he was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, like a sheep. This is Old Testament. This is from the prophet Isaiah, like a sheep that bore its shears is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And, and as for this generation who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people, and they made his grave with the wicked and with the rich man in his death. And that's obviously prophetic of uh, Joseph of Arimathea. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. And this goes on, on and on about, <coughs> you know, the, the, this is the picture that was painted even in the Old Testament. And they missed it. And so when I, one of the things I love about the Gospels is it's not just it's not just a, a, the the proclamation of the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. It's also connecting it with the coming of the king and the kingdom, meaning like this is what the whole Old Testament was talking. All the prophets, everything they yep. wrote. Yep. This is it. This is where it's happening. And so you see even like at Jesus's baptism, which is kind of a precursor of his death burial and resurrection think about this they, those people they, he was baptized in the jordan river which which was the river that was parted when they were coming out of bondage into the promised land and when they did that they 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 sinned wickedly and all the kings of israel and the majority of the kings of judah were wicked and so they were coming back to john the baptist to be baptized for repentance and some kind of renewal movement and so think about all the sin they were going into the water sinful to have their sins removed and, and and to be clean and to come out clean. And then Jesus goes in the water clean and takes on the sins of the people. I mean, so it's, it's even more than just him dying an innocent man. He's taking on the guilt of, of the people that they, they, they go in sinful, come out clean. He goes in clean and takes on their sin, takes on our sin and that's what's happening at the cross here is that Christ is taking on the sins of the people and he was spotless. And that 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 substitutionary atonement is is key to understanding the nature of who God is and 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 certainly key to understanding the power dynamics that are shifting or maybe not shifting but the God is 
is um, showing us in the king and the new kingdom that Jay's talked about. Yeah, Stephen brings this up. So what they did to him was kill him, dragged him out of the city, and went to stone him. And then you and Saul was there, the apostle Paul that's fixing to come, and Saul was there giving approval to his death. Saul began to destroy the church, going from house to house, be dragged off, men and women, and put in prison. This was a rough deal. But it ends up when they believed Philip as he preached the good news of the kingdom, which included Saul and all of them, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Simon himself believed and baptized. So you get to looking at it, they're winning a few and losing out on some more. So... Yeah, my, my point is, and I agree with what y'all said, my whole point was, and it's where we left off, which is about where we're ending today, but in Luke 23, 5, when they bring Jesus before Pilate, they insisted he stirs up the people all over Judea by his teaching. Yep. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. And my point is, that's why the the leaders of the day, Herod and Pilate, they tried to have a theological discussion with him because of this charge. He's out here teaching this theology that and he's he's become a threat. And my point is what Jesus did is what separates him above anybody else that ever made this claim or tried to lead a revolution you or rebel correct. against authority. What he did was interactions with people. He didn't he didn't grab his 12 disciples that night and say, okay, here's the speech. Now I'm going to explain all this to you because you're not getting it to your point. Yep. He didn't do that. He washed their feet and he had a meal and he then died on a cross. It, it wasn't he, he, he had every chance to opine on all the teachings of God that he was representing. And he didn't say a word most of the time. Even yeah. when Herod, remember when he was at it with Herod, he just. But he which was, which was prophesied in, in Isaiah 53. True. That, but my it. point is, my point is, why did he, why am I making such a big deal about this? Because this is about him rescuing people and then using the very same people that he created to be him on this earth. It's deeper than just some kind of theology. I'm all, that's all we do is talk about thoughts and theology and what does it mean? He didn't do that. He did these interactions. You, you After the cross, he was resurrected. But then what did he do? He had a meal and ate fish. He was trying to show you that God is visiting humans, and there is a plan here, and I'm going to show you the character of God, by which then you can be moved, surrendered to, and then do likewise. It was all an inter interaction with people. And to go back to that same bet, the reason you lost that bet is because what Jesus offers and what he did on a cross in the moments before and after is still just as appealing today. It brings people from out of their closets, their living rooms, and they have a meal, and you share Jesus, I and you see the love. Yesterday, five new ones. Five new yeah. ones. Five, five and I think we miss that when we try to view this and read this, the crucifixion from a theological standpoint. It was just, it was an act of, of, from a man claiming to be God that was like no other in the history of the world. Well, Jay, you did it. You tied in from cold open to close. Excellent. If we could do that every episode, we <laughs> so, that would be that was, yeah, that was good. Perfect Jace. tie up together. So we're out of time. Uh, we'll uh, we'll pick this up, and your Jay's is right. We'll actually uh, pick the text up in the next Unashamed. We'll see you there. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes, and don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.